What is good, Grey Gang? Today we're introducing a brand new member to the pool pond. He is a creature that I can almost guarantee has never been put in a pool pond before. Introducing Myrtle, the snapping turtle. Now, Myrtle the turtle, this is indeed a snapping turtle. This is a baby snapping turtle. He weighs about, I don't know, five ounces or something. He's not very big, but I'm about positive he could still take a hunk out of you if he wanted to. So even though he's still a baby, we're still gonna be pretty careful with him. We named him Myrtle because he's a turtle. That's about, that's about the only reasoning we got. But now on to the story of how did we get a snapping turtle literally this small. So, you know, we were just out fishing for turtles, just like we always do. Here's some footage of it. But, you know, we were just out there. We were trying to catch turtles. What we were going to do is we were removing them from the pond because these turtles, just like this one, this guy's mommy and daddy, well, they had really been putting a dent into the bass population, which was a bad thing. Somehow we caught Myrtle, but now we have a new member to the pool pond. It is time to go put Myrtle the turtle in his enclosure. Now, you got to understand, guys, Myrtle the turtle, Turtle. He's a snapping turtle. We can't just put him in there with the rest of our fish and crawdads because most likely he'll just snack on them like he is right now. Because like I said earlier, guys, yeah, he is like five ounces, but he's still a snapping turtle. And snapping turtles have no mercy on any other creature. So instead of putting him in the big pond right over there, we're thinking about giving him his own pond in this smaller one right here. I'm just going to dip this guy right in here. He's, uh, you know, well, there he goes. He should have fun in there. Now, what's good about this enclosure for him is, one, he doesn't have anything that he can kill, which is a good thing, I guess. And it gives him a lot of room to swim around, and if he ever wants air, which, you know, turtles are reptiles, so they have to come to the surface to get air and they breathe with lungs. All he's going to do is use his air bladder, float up to the top, get air, and then he'll just go back down, just like in a pond. And I might even put a brick in here for him right now. I think I will. Let's go find Myrtle the Turtle a brick. Mm, yeah, this one looks good. Myrtle the Turtle. How about we give him a rock? Here we go. This is a good rock for him. So here's the rock I decided to put in there with him. I'm just gonna set it in there just like that. That way if he wants to, he can always just come over here, climb up on top of it, and sit on it. Because he is sort of the king of the hill. He's definitely the king of this pond because he's the only thing in there. And there he is there. He's already poking his head out and starting to swim around. I guess he was just kind of scared. Maybe he's camera shy. I don't know. He may be. But because there is no fish in there, nothing for him to eat, we have to feed him meat ourselves. And well, the particular meat that I'm wanting to feed Myrtle is literally a piece of steak that I'm gonna have for lunch. Now it is just a corner of it and it's a pretty big piece, but from what we know already, Myrtle has no discrimination on how big the piece is. Like, I mean, come on guys, we legit caught Myrtle on a piece of fat back that big. He's got a big appetite. He knows who he is, so I'm gonna feed this guy a little steak and see how he reacts to that. He may not eat it right away, but then again, he might. If he ever gets hungry, I'm sure he'll find it though. I'll drop it in here right on his face and see if he wants to chomp on it. I'll drop it in right there. I'm sure Myrtle will take care of it whenever he gets hungry. He, he can smell it. Turtles have really good sense of smell. And like this little film that's coming off the meat, whenever he rises up on the top of the water, he can actually smell that and locate the meat. Now, as for age for this guy, I have no clue whatsoever how old Myrtle is. But what I do know is that he is still fierce fighting turtle. And our plan is, you know, maybe keep him in here, maybe get him a bigger enclosure, but just see how he grows over time. We obviously didn't want to eat this guy because he's a... Well, he's a baby, so we're just gonna keep him as a pet, see how big he gets, and then eventually, well, I don't know, we'll, we'll pick it up from there. But Adam may be the owner of this guy soon, we don't know yet. I can come over here, I can pet his back right there, he's not gonna try to bite me because he knows I'm his dad now, I guess, if that's how it works, I don't know. But here is Myrtle, up close and personal, inside the bite zone of the American baby snapping turtle. He's still got a good hunk of a mouth right there, you gotta give him that, he's still got a big mouth, still can probably hurt your finger if he gets it. But look at him staying locked on the camera. You can tell he's not too old and too mature because he's trying to hide in his shell rather than try to bite. Which most older snapping turtles, their main defense mechanism isn't hiding, but just straight up bite, latch on to whatever he can and destroy you. I'm gonna set him up on that rock and see how he likes it. And I don't think we're gonna have to worry about him getting thirsty. Because he's in a pond. Okay, guys, I just checked back in. Myrtle the turtle is on the move. He's got his neck fully extended right there. If you can see it, he's out there. He's on the prowl. He knows his steak's there. He just went and took a bite out of it. He's looking for his next dinner. He's looking for something to wreck and destroy and rip apart with his mouth and deadly claws. He is looking for a bird to eat off the top of the water. He is looking for another turtle to play tag with. But we'll give that guy about five hours, something like that. Just give him time to eat the meat. We'll come out here and check on him. But hey, 
as for now, let's look over here at this pond. Now, one thing that you do notice is there is starting to be algae and stuff growing on the bottom and over here on these rocks and even over there on the side a little bit. That's actually a good thing, guys. Like, I'm not getting mad that there's algae or anything. That's a good thing. That means that everything's working out right and it's being more like a pond each and every day. Because you know in a real pond, there's algae everywhere. Algae on the rocks, so there's being algae in here. That just makes it more and more realistic to the fish. Now, as you can see, what I'm feeding them is actually just dog food. And once it sets in here for about an hour, it gets soft and they just come up, take a bite out of it and go back down just as they want to. And because this dog food is meat based, which means it's sort of made with a type of meat, the crawdads over there, like the rock, they're loving it too. So this dog food right here, it's sort of a universal bait for all the different types of fish in here. All the bluegill, the chub minners, the crawdads, they're all loving it. We may do a full exchange. We may clean out the water here in a day or two. We'll give it a little bit more because I mean, they seem to like it all right. The aerator over here, I mean, it's doing flawlessly, bro. It's been pumping straight nonstop for about two, three weeks now. No problems at all. It's doing great, guys. Myrtle the turtle doing what he does best, just crawling around and, you know, growing moss on his back. But yeah, guys, we'll leave these guys alone. We'll go do something else real quick and we'll, we'll get, yeah. Let's go do something else. Okay, guys, so remember like, I don't know, like two videos, one video ago, I'm not exactly sure, but whenever one of my chickens got gone and we suspected a coon done it, well, seems like he struck again. Not my chickens, but my uncle's chicken. And man, did he do it. I think there was three in this cage, and he all, he killed them all last night. And we even had this trap set for him. He somehow legit got in there. We had marshmallows in there. He got in the cage, set it off, and got out. We had him last night, and he broke out of this. And then right here, you can see where he stuck his hand out from this side of the trap and dug the hole. But from there, I don't know how he got out. And he still killed all them chickens. And that's how he originally got in, is that big hole right there. That is a problem, boys. Straight up destroyed them. I'm talking there was three in there, and now there's none. So I guess what we're going to do is, since he attacked this place and my place in like a matter of two days, we're going all out setting traps. This one, this one's not even enough. I didn't even put that one on camera. And a fun fact, me and Adam were riding around here at night one day, and we saw him in the act. Of course, we're not the best detectives. He got away. And now I know what you're thinking. Kendall, it's not coon trapping season. But I know, we just had like eight chickens get killed. Cut me some slack, guys. The flock is down. We are losing chickens right now. So here's the plan. We got two dog proofs here. I'm going to put one dog proof at my house, one dog proof here, along with the live trap here. Or maybe the live trap at my house and two dog proofs here. Not exactly sure right now. But what we are going to do is we're definitely going to set a bunch of traps. We have to get this coon because if we don't, I'm not going to have any more chickens. First, we've got to find a place to anchor this in, which may be a hard thing. But I'd say we can probably go right back there and he'll probably find it. So what I'm going to do right here is wrap it around the tree just like this. That ain't going nowhere. I'm going to set the trap right here. Anchor it right here in the ground. That's possibly the path he's been using right through here so he'll have to walk over it to get anywhere. And we got some old marshmallows from like the 1990s we're going to use for bait. Go ahead, put some in there. Make sure some of them get under the trigger. And then we'll just put some right down in top. Cause, and it's okay if we spill some because that'll just make him more interested and want more and more and more. So we're setting this other trap right here beside the fence. We've got to anchor it into a tire. Now, it's a big tire. This might be a bad idea. If it's a big coon, we may see him going down the road with it, dragging this tire like this right here. We don't know. We're just going to hope he's not that big, because he didn't look that big. And if he did, he shouldn't be too hard to find. Oh, he did a bit of that, but he'd be full as crap. He'll love it. So now we're back at my house. This is exactly where the guy broke in, so we're just going to put the trap right here. Hopefully, he has to run into it in order to get to the chicken. And we're going to put some marshmallows right out here. No, now the chickens are trying to trying to eat the marshmallows. But because this guy possibly already got in this last night and he may like see it and recognize it, I'm going to camouflage it. Looks good. There we go, boys. Now it should be good to go. I swear, Myrtle ain't worth a daggone dime. I thought he was going to be cool, but he just sits there. Does nothing. He, it's been it's been two days. He hasn't touched the steak. There's a little bit of steak in there, but that's because I pinched it off to feed it to the crawdads. The rock loved it. I dropped it into the rock and he started eating it immediately. But now he's full, so he don't want to eat it anymore. But for real, look at this dude. He, he doesn't do anything. Do anything. Look yeah. at him. Just a boring turtle. We should have named this guy the rock. But not because he's strong. Because he's literally a rock. Like, sometimes I come out here and I'm like, oh, look, there's, there's Myrtle. Then like, oh, no, 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 that's him. That's what you get. That's all he does. Every now and again, you'll get lucky and he'll like to chomp on something. But, you know, besides that, 
pretty much what you get. Yep. Myrtle the turtle, everybody. He does have a pretty good bite force, though. I will say that. For a little turtle. Don't forget to follow me on Amino. The link is in the description. And my username is at kennelgray1. What I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to get out my phone and I'm going to post a picture of my favorite fish from the pool pond. And I'm not going to show you which one it is. You guys are going to have to get on the Amino and figure it out yourself. So if you've not downloaded it already, go on down in the description. Click the link, download it. My name is kennelgray1 and join the fishing Amino. That's where my post will be. And don't forget to like. And while you're at it, on that post, I want you to comment hashtag C2 because, well, this is C2. See you then. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching Kendall's video. Go ahead and hit the like button and also drop a quick subscribe. If you're new here, you can go get your merch at kendallgray1.com shop. Always remember, hashtag Jesus, hashtag Grey Gang.